kicentral.com. King's Island's ultimate fan site. Presenting the colors for today's celebration, please welcome the Ohio National Guard. We remind you to remain standing until the colors have been retired following the singing of our national anthem. Singing today's national anthem, actor, singer, author, and longest running Mufasa in Disney's The Lion King with 4,308 performances. Please welcome back Kings Island alumni, Alton Fitzgerald White. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red. still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the some other special guests who are here with us to celebrate this this day. Uh, Tim Fisher, the CEO or COO of Cedar Fair. Where's Tim? Tim is back in the back. Gary Watts, the founder of King's Island. The first general manager and a King's Island Hall of Fame Dennis Spiegel. Stand up, guys. Dennis Spiegel, founder and president of International Theme Park Services, industry expert, former Kings Island assistant general manager, and also a Kings Island Hall of Fame member. In addition, we have seven of the 11 Kings Island general managers here with us today. The only ones that could not be with us um, you know, have passed away, but we 
we hold them in our in our memories today at this special occasion. The former general managers, Billy Price. <laughs> Dean Narrow. Somewhere out in the audience is Greg Scheid. Where is Greg? And Craig Ross. And I failed to mention, but Tim Fisher was also a former general manager of Kings Island who actually hired me in 1999. Thank you very much, Tim. We also have a lot of City, county, state officials with us today. Mason, Ohio city officials have already introduced uh, the mayor, Barbara Spaeth. In addition, we have some city council members uh, here in the audience with us as well today. Warren County officials, uh, Warren County Commissioner, and Warren County CVD. Uh, Deerfield Township officials, and also representatives from the state of Ohio uh, Matt McLaren, I think, is, is here with the Ohio Tourism Board. Is Matt, Matt here? There's Matt. Woo! Matt's over there. Hi, Matt. Woo! The other thing that, that is very special to me today, and I've, I've seen several of you already, but we have <clears throat> numerous Kings Island retirees, some of which spent over 40 years of the career, their career here at Kings Island. Uh, I saw uh, several of them in the audience here today, so thank you guys for coming back. Thank you for everything that you have done, you know, in, in the past to make Kings Island what it is today. In addition, we have a lot of our Kings Island full, current full-time employees here celebrating this, this occasion with us. And a lot of partners that have, that have been with Kings Island over the years and, you know, great partners that we've had uh, just Thank you for being here as well. And finally, you know, the most special guests of all, our loyal, get, our loyal guests and season pass holders. We appreciate you being here to celebrate this day with us. <laughs> April 29th, 50 years ago, Kings Island opened its gates to several thousand guests. These guests had waited over two years to experience this new amusement park in then it was Deerfield Township, now Mason, Warren County, Ohio. What they experienced was beyond their expectations. With the Royal Fountain, the 314 foot tall Eiffel Tower, standing in front of them, these few thousand guests experienced something that over 150 million guests today have enjoyed. 50 years later. An amusement park that has provided fun, thrills, memories, record-breaking coasters, world-class entertainment, and a place that provides a summer of fun and more for everyone. This would not have been possible without the passion, the vision, the dedication of one man, Gary Watts. At this time, I'd like to invite Gary, the founder of Kings Island's first general manager to the podium to speak to you about that journey.
glad to work with. I don't think we've ever had anything as challenging as COVID. And I admire you for getting through that. It is difficult for me to uh, uh, compact eight years into five minutes, but I will try. Two recent books on Kings Island. I highly recommend for all of you because they have all the details that time won't permit today. Uh, one of them, <coughs> one of them is uh, uh, Kings Island: A Ride Through Time, which I think is already on sale here. And Evan, the author, might be signing some today. And the other is a picture book. It's a, it's a uh, picture journey through time, and that's coming out. What do you think? few weeks, good, and you'll all want to get that. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm deviating a, little, I'm deviating a little bit here today, but if you ever get a chance to come out here at Winterfest and see Winterfest, it's worth the price of admission to stand here and right here and now or go home. This is the most beautiful sight you'll ever see in your life. Let's get back to Summerfest. Uh, the, the two greatest theme parks in my opinion for a lot of reasons are owned and operated right here in Ohio. They're Cedar Point and they're Kings, of, uh, Kings Island. They are great, great parks. Cedar Point and Kings Island and a whopping combined attend, end of annual attendance of about seven and a half million people. That's incredible. Kings Island perspective. I imagine there's about 75 legitimate theme parks operating in, uh, operating today. Before Kings Island, there were only three Six Flags parks, uh, opening in 1961, 67, and, and, uh, and 71. Um, Six Flags over Texas. Opened in 1961, and they started something called Pay One Price Admission. It was very popular. Heretofore, the business was run by Cash, Universal Ticket Systems, Disney, had the ABC coupons. But it's Pay One Price set up a wonderful standard for the industry, and it's been better ever since. Kings Island is a unique theme park, in my opinion. Kings Island is unique as the, as the park that had its origins from another small park in Cincinnati called Coney Island. Coney Island was the egg that hatched Kings Island. Our, and our iconic International Street stands alone, in my opinion, compared to any other theme park entrance in the country. The Eiffel Tower was made in Graz, Austria. We put that tower up for the price of a million for lights, construction, materials. It was put up by a soft go, a director in Dayton, and they only had to rent out 26 bolts in the entire uh, Eiffel Tower construction. That was amazing. Uh, <clears throat> the Eiffel Tower was made with German precision from Graz, Austria. <laughs> Cost a million four, including elevator lighting. We designed the entrance, and we designed the entrance at the other end of the park to be very low, creating a more dramatic and magical scene when guests entered the park. This was done by design. The pleasant shock is they, as they come in from under the uh, entrance, really presented a marvelous sort of word of mouth. I heard so many people out there say, oh my God, oh my God, they just couldn't believe this. And uh, that, that was very helpful to us, as you'll see down the, down the road. Uh, when the park opened in June of 72, we had unexpectedly low crowds in June. We had poor weather, we had rain. And we, had, we think we had a conflict with Coney Island even back then because you could get into Coney for 50 cents and this was six bucks, at least that was the perception. And nobody knew what you got for six bucks. But we finally made it. That word of mouth I mentioned earlier kicked in. And it's like you've seen the best movie you've ever seen. You tell your family, your friends, and boom, and it shoots up in the air. The 
Another unique thing to this park was the Racer Coaster. It was constructed in 1972, but it was the first racing coaster built since the 1920s. It revitalized the wooden coaster industry. A single wooden coaster had not been built since the 40s and was shunned by the first Six, uh, six Flags parks, and they were trying to escape the image of an old park. We brought this up from Coney Island. We had the uh, shooting star at Coney Island, and you can't believe your bus ride back there. You would have to enhance it, and we did, and we pulled it over it in the uh, Coney Island section. It was wildly successful, and of course, immediately copied, uh, copied by all of her friends uh, at the Six Flags Parks. They, they started building coasters, and the coaster war was on in the theme park business. We, we had Anna Barbera, Land, that was the children's section, second only to Disney in the use of its nationally known children's characters. One of the things we had, it was not a glamorous uh, item. It was an item suggested by our park uh, uh, construction manager, Charles Flatt, who was a graduate of Cincinnati. He started Cunio in 1946 after his stand in the war. He ran our famous swimming pool in And he came up to me and he said, Gary, we've got to spend some money on things besides glitz. Engineer, and it was his idea to put this uh, uh, underground sewer water system at Coney Island, and it surrounds the whole park. And I believe it's the only one of its kind of any theme park in the country. And that sewer water system saves us hundreds of thousands of dollars in energy costs every year. So sometimes it's the things that you don't see that's important. <coughs> In 1972, Kings Island opened on time and was the first theme park to draw over two million people in its first year. Notice I did not say on budget. <laughs> but the overages were spent wisely. Speaking of opening, the general manager's primary first duty is to get this park open. Thank you. 
And in the 60s, it had the best financial years it ever, it ever had. Do you sell a park? Do you move in the 60s when you're doing that well? Well, you do under these circumstances. Coney Island had serious floods in the 1960s, almost every year. It had a lack of expansion room. And in, in particularly, looming, the looming threat of a new theme park in our, in our market area, and we had one of the best market areas in the country. We were surrounded by Dayton and Indianapolis and uh, uh, Louisville and Lexington, and they had no entertainment uh, whatsoever, and we did, and we were on the, the new interstate system. So we were ready to go. In July 1969, after five years of research, spent on the new theme park company, Coney Island finally merged with the Tap Broadcasting Company. The Tap Broadcasting Company by that time had acquired Hanna-Barbera, which became a real asset to this park. Coney Island was incorporated in 1925 and finally sold in 1971. You know, you have to be about 60 years old, I figure, to remember Coney Island and its heyday. Raise your hand if you remember Coney Island at all. But it was a good thing. That's more than I expected. I would like to pay tribute to those who made Kings Island so successful in 1972. First of all, my father, Ralph Walks, president of Coney Island, permitted me to travel extensively in search of new ideas for the new park. Now, Dad wasn't the spearhead of the park, but in the back of his mind, he knew it was the right thing to do. We had to do it. Besides a productive trip to Europe, I, I reviewed the three uh, new Six Flags parks again. I went to two World's Fairs and the Canadian Expedition. While I was at the 1964 New Year's Fair, I saw this magnificent fountain. I took several pictures of it. And I came home and again I consulted Charlie Flat. I said, Charlie, do you think you can build that thing with your team? Charlie had a lot of good guys working for him, two consultants. He said, we'll build it and we'll build it right. And here it is today, all these years, 50 years, and it still runs like a Swiss watch. And again, I encourage you to come up here and see this on uh, uh, Winterfest. It's absolutely indescribably beautiful. Ironically, the destination that I expected more than any other was Cedar Point. Cedar Point, was Cedar Point their ownership and management, I believe, led the industry in return on investment, making wise and popular entertainment choices in the early years. The trip to Cedar Point every year for me was a must. I learned a lot. I would like to pay tribute to the TAP Broadcasting Company who financed Kings Island. There are many great ideas that are either misunderstood, they never come to fruition, or, and, and they don't get the money. But TAP grasped this idea immediately uh, and grasped the idea of a new theme park immediately and financing quickly was an unproven venture. Uh, I like to think that uh, I was not privy to any of those financing meetings, but this was 1969, this was a long time ago, and I'm just imagining the meetings might have gone something like this for TAP. TAP walks into their lead bank, talked to their lead banker and said, Harry, and, uh, we need to borrow twenty million dollars. And Harry kind of looked, and that wasn't the, that wasn't some change in those days. And he said, twenty million dollars? Yeah, sure. What do you need it for? Well, we're going to build a theme park. What? A theme park? Well, you have Coney Island right here. Why did you, why are you building a theme park? Well, we're going to build this in Warren County. Where the hell is Warren County? <laughs> We're going to build it. Where? And you're going to put two million people in the first year in the, in the center of Warren County? They couldn't believe it. So the banker pulls out of the lower part of his drawer a little bottle of very fine bourbon that he saved for these occasions. He said, Taff, let's go to the other room and discuss this a little further. If it looked like that, it would.
wouldn't have surprised me. I mean, because it was hard to finance an operation that wasn't even in business. Nobody knew what this was going to be like, and they did it, and they deserve a world of credit for it. I also would like to pay tribute to the Coney Island Department heads and the great hourly employees, some of which are from Coney, and most of them are general contractors, receiving measure. The great employees who built this park. This is the finest construction park that I've ever seen in my travels. And here it is, right here in Warren uh, County. I'm talking about the electricians, the bricklayers, the carpenters, the steel workers, the painters, and all the other trades that took. You had no idea how much pride they took in building this park. This wasn't my park. This wasn't Kings Island's park. It wasn't Cass Park. It was their park. And they built it accordingly, and they were instrumental in getting this park open on time. I got a call from one of their vice presidents one night at 1 o'clock in the morning. His name was Bill Baldwin. He was vice president of measure. He said, Gary, I can't sleep. He said, we're really behind in one area of the park, and I just had to talk to him. I said, Bill, call me anytime. I'll see you at 730 in the next morning. We'll get our team and get right on it, and we did. But it was that attitude by our general contractor that pulled this park through. I'd also like to pay tribute to the good elected officials of Warren County, and especially Bob South, and more importantly, the county engineer, Luke Oswald. They were so incredibly um, cooperative that they made this venture happen. We couldn't have done it without the good cooperation of Warren County. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not mention my first wife, Marty Walks, who faithfully supported me, listening to all my frustrations for five years along the way, getting this program started. Marty was a cancer victim in, in, uh, in 2004. She's not with us today. I was lucky enough then to marry my second wife, who was Terry Pittman there. And Terry was kind enough to listen to all my theme park stories and war stories from guys like Spiegel and Kenton and Bill Price, all these fellas. She listened to my stories every day for 14 years, and she's been very patient, and honey, I thank you for that. Before, uh, before Mike gets the hook out again, <laughs> thank you for inviting me my family, which is so important to me. I'm lucky to be here, and most of all, thank you, Cedar Point, for investing weekly, or investing wisely in Kings Island and leaving it in mint condition 50 years ago. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Gary. Uh, I never will forget the first time I met Gary. It was in Winterfest, and uh, you know, since then, Gary and I speak quite often. Uh, he's, as, as you can tell, he's very passionate about King's Island. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to introduce our uh, Lieutenant Governor, John Houston, to come to the stage and uh, talk to talk to us. Wonderful history. Thank you for sharing that with us. I will tell you, I can imagine what it was like when they went and asked for that $20 million. It probably, probably did create a little bit of a gasp uh, at that point in time. Uh, I have, uh, in, in preparation for today, I looked at an old photograph of myself when I was 12 years old here at Kings Island. And boy, did I look like a little dork at the time. <laughs> I had my Cincinnati Reds hard hat. Anybody ever have one of those Cincinnati Reds hard hats? It hurt. I wore it all day here. I had my Beast t-shirt on. I had uh, jean shorts 
some long white socks with the stripes at the top and some Ken's, and some Ken's tennis shoes. It was quite a sight. But I remember the day just like it was yesterday because it was so exciting for me to be here as a 12 year old. And we heard the business side of it, but how many of you remember being here when you were a kid and have some great memories? Yeah, absolutely. And just think of the number of children who've had that experience, the, the excitement that this, that this place brought to them, the family memories that they had together. To think that 150 million people have come in and out of this park that is nearly half the population of America uh, over time. And it's just an amazing thing to think that uh, this vision created so many great memories for so many people to bring joy into their lives. Uh, it's also been uh, a great economic development uh, piece of this part of Southwest Ohio. It brings money in from people all over uh, the Midwest to, to uh, Southwest Ohio and has created how many thousands of jobs over the years for kids and college students and people like that that help give them a start in life. So it, it's a magical place for what it's meant for so many people. And Governor DeWine and I uh, are with you as you celebrate your 50th anniversary. And we have uh, put together a combination, Mike, that I would like to present to you from Governor DeWine and myself, honoring your 50 years and wishing you 50 more amazing years here at Kings Island. Some of the same dreams that young girls still have today when you think about celebrities. 
Watching the fireworks was also such a thrill because we really didn't have a lot of fireworks. You'd be lucky if you'd have fireworks once a year. So in 1976, I finally started working here, and that was really a, it really was a dream come true for me. Um, I met a lot of people, a lot of other kids from the Cincinnati area that would, I would never have met because I, my friends pretty much were limited to like the Mason School area. Um, I have to tell a story. One, one year I worked at Potato Works, and that was the first summer that that restaurant opened up, and I don't know if that's what it's still called. It was over in Rivertown. But I'm going to tell you, oh my goodness, I'm pretty sure that I gained 10 pounds that year because we were always sneaking trying to pop those fries in our mouth when our supervisor wasn't looking. Sorry to tell that. And I'm sure that still goes on now. We actually kind of made a game out of it because we wanted to see if we could do it without getting caught. And then Kings Island would always have the after hours employee only parties. Oh my gosh, those were so fun. I remember one time they were letting us ride the beast, and this was soon after the beast had opened up. And I am pretty sure that they were using us as guinea pigs to see if they could make that roller coaster go faster and faster, and how fast they could make it go. But you know what? We didn't care. It was so much fun, and we just loved, loved having those after-hour parties. One thing about the park, I was telling a little bit of a story earlier about how long it would take to get to your station where you worked. And from that, you know, I really learned a lot about responsibility and being punctual and, you know, what it meant to really work hard. I mean, it was hard to work here in the summer. It's hot, let me tell you. And you're out here outside all day long. But there are so many stories that I could continue to tell you about how much I loved working at the park and what it meant to have Kings Island come to our community. It's what changed the fabric of the Mason community. When I was working here, I had no idea what Kings Island would mean to Mason today. I have no doubt that Kings Island played a, a role in attracting over 700 local, national, and international businesses that are here in Mason. Today, Mason is the largest city in Warren County, and we're one of the top robust in, in economic environments in Ohio and the Midwest. It was also the driving force as the economic powerhouse for tourism here in the county. And Kings Island continues to be a part of this fabric. And I have to tell this story. A few years back, I served as the vice mayor. And oftentimes, we use our, our partners, our community partners, to help bring companies to here, here in Mason. And we had a company that we were trying to entice. Um, and we were taking them all over the place. And Kings Island was one of the places that we were going to bring them. And, and actually, they helped us quite a bit. And, Breeding this company, but I'm going to tell this silly story. So we decided we're going to take the, the men from the company around town, and they decided to put me in the limousine with these guys. Okay, and I'm a little bit of a country bumpkin at times, and I'm showing them around Mason and telling them, oh, that's where so-and-so used to be, and so-and-so, and that kind of thing. Well, then we pull into the parking lot at Kings Island, and next thing I know, our limousine is coming down International Street, Okay, and I'm kind of screaming like a little school girl because school girl, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm in a limousine on International Street. I was like more excited than them, believe me. And then we go to the, the base of the tower here, we go to the top of the tower, we're toasting champagne, and I'm like, just really acting giddy and silly. But you know what, I guess it was okay because they ended up moving here. We got that company, so it was really fun. But Kings Island played a big part in bringing that company here to our area. <clears throat> I'm sure that the uh, Kings Island founders had a lot more vision than I ever did. You know, they took a chance, did bold things, and created a regional destination for fun. The Grizzly Golf and Social Lodge, which began as the golf center at Kings Island, was built across the highway around the same time as Kings Island, and they're also going to be celebrating their 50th year um, anniversary this year. So for 50 years, Grizzly Golf has hosted top national PGA events and pros, as well as local and regional golfers. Also right across the highway, we have the the Western and Southern Open Men's and Women's Tennis Events, which bring worldwide attention to Mason on an annual basis. The founders of Kings Island really started something. I'm sure they could predict that Kings Island would be fondly remembered by millions of employees and visitors like me.
Maybe they envisioned that Kings Island would become a key player in the huge tourism business in Warren County, but did they, did they know it would be a catalyst for a robust community of local, national, and international businesses? Without Kings Island, Mason would not be the wonderful community that I love. What a treasure we have here with Kings Island. And I can tell you right now, I'm listening to the rides right now, it's just, it's so exciting to be back here and thinking about what have, Kings Island has meant to our community. So I just want to say thank you, Kings Island, from me, from the city of Mason, and my fellow council members that are here today, and for all of your magic. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, Richard Zimmerman, the Chief Executive Officer of Cedar Fair, who also started his career here at Kings Island many years ago. And Richard and I have, have worked together side by side, and, and uh, I, I can't say enough about, about Richard and what he means what he means to me and, and uh, the opportunities he's provided for me. Richard. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mike. You know, it is great to be with you all here on such a special day at such a special place. So, you know, first I have to say thank you to Mike and his team for all they do, um, not only putting on this event, but every day, opening up the park, and really being true to what Kings Island has, has meant all these years. We're in the business of creating memories and making people happy. And sometimes that's really hard. But people who stay in this business a long time, and I see a lot of familiar faces out in the crowd, we do it because every day you get up, every day is different, and it's so satisfying to create memories for our guests, so thank you all for being here. But we also create memories for our own staff and the folks that work here. So the creating memories and making people happy applies just as much on the employee side. So Gary, thank you for sharing with us all, your, all of your thoughts, and thank you for the perseverance and in the guts to put this project together and see it through. Back. A lot of folks know this may not know you. You said Kings Island was, there's only three before Kings Island was built. Kings Island really was on the forefront of building out our entire industry. As you think about everybody who's come through the Kings Island family, they've helped shape most of what the industry has become. So this is a very special place, and it has meant so much to so many people on our side, so thank you. Lieutenant Governor, I'd like to thank you for our strong partnership with the state of Ohio. Uh, Ohio is a great place to be, and a great place for businesses to come to. It is such a great community to be a part of. We like playing our role. We are so appreciative that the state plays its role and helps us uh, form better community relationships and, and a more vibrant community. Mayor of Spain, likewise, for you at the city, we exist. We exist because the community supports us, and we are so appreciative of your partnership and your support as we try and carve a new future and be part of that new future here in the city of Mason and for those from Deerfield Township, our past with them as well. So, what I'll leave you with this. This is probably one of the grandest entrances that we're standing on in the entire industry. So the vision all those years ago come to fruition. Those of us that are part of this business now feel a huge responsibility to make sure that we carry on the legacy, but that we take the, the business, take the franchises, and leave them better than we found them, and provide a stronger foundation for many generations to come to enjoy the park, and really get out and be what we can be. A place where people can come together, have fun with family and friends, and enjoy their lives together. So, with that, Mike, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Richard. And uh, now I'd like to introduce Dennis Spiegel, who's been uh, part of Kings Island, part of the industry, for a very, very long time. And Dennis, I'd like you to come to the podium and... Keep it short, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.
much, and it's really a pleasure to be here today. And I want to thank Mike, thank you, Richard, the mayor, Lieutenant Governor, thank you, and for all you did in 2020. <clears throat> really appreciate it. Special thanks, uh, of course, to Gary Walks. Uh, Gary really is the father of Kings Island, and he's as close as you're ever going to get to Walt Disney. And I think let's give him another round. For uh, probably going out and having drinks with me about 53 years ago and hiring me. <laughs> Every once in a while you make a mistake. <laughs> It was, a, it was a good evening. Um, who could have, who really could have imagined long ago, 50 years ago, that we would be really standing here today at Kings Island and some of us still alive. Um, we um, were celebrating this wonderful and, and treasured theme park, uh, as has been pointed out, um, Kings Island. It's unbelievable. And I wish we had a lot of time today to tell you a lot of stories. We don't, but I'm going to, going to touch on a couple of things that were kind of fun. But I'm looking back on uh, on Kings Island, as Gary did. It was magical. It was exciting. It was a time in the history of uh, an emerging fledg fledgling industry, the theme park industry, as Gary pointed out. There were very few parks in existence at that point in time. Uh, today, there are actually about 475 theme and amusement parks in the United States. And uh, as Gary said, there were only about less than a handful of parks at that time. So it was amazing uh, what we were doing. Probably, Gary, if we knew what we do, were doing back then, we wouldn't have done it if we hit the, hit the, the, the brains. Uh, I want to quickly remember uh, back to the late 60s and 70s leading up to the opening of, of Kings Island, which was, as I say, was truly electrifying. It was a time of ideas and the adrenaline was flowing uh, fast and furious and, and everyone with the team. Uh, Gary put together a team really of young, energetic, enthusiastic talent. Many of them stand over here. Tom Kempton, uh, Nick Miller, Russ Flatt. Can't see very far after that. Great Pancero, the, with uh, the, who did our pizza in the park and made the roses famous. Actually, uh, we were in that planning mode, uh, but we were also in a learning mode. And uh, our team, as Gary pointed out, traveled to all these theme parks to look at them and uh, to meet the individuals in the business. Uh, I thought it was interesting <laughs> that. Uh, we were having, a, we were in Coney Island actually, still planning Kings Island. We hadn't really dug here yet, and we were having a uh, phone call here, you might remember this, with the Six Flags guys. And uh, at that point in time, uh, there were only the three Six Flags parts, and they asked Gary, we were on a speakerphone, they asked Gary, they said, What are you guys uh, projecting for your first year attendance at, uh, at Kings Island? And Gary said, well, we're, uh, we're projecting uh, 2 million people. And <clears throat> there was silence for a second, and then a huge laugh came out over the phone from their end. And we all kind of looked at it. <laughs> Do you remember Ed McHale was there, your dad, you and I, and a few others, and we went, Ooh, are we off that far? Is, is that really going to happen? So um, things kicked in. The business here up until July 4th was really kind of slow. We were doing about the Kings of the Coney Island numbers. And I think Gary said, what if you threw a party and nobody came? Well, on the 4th of July, the spigot opened up. 35,000 people came. And from that day after, we averaged 35 to 40,000 people a day. At the end of the season, when we closed that last day, we had 2,012,000 people. Only two other parks in history had done that. You might know it or have heard of them. Disneyland and Disney World. <laughs> okay. So now the third one was King's Island. So Gary said, hey, let's have a call with the Six Flags guys. <laughs> so we did. We were back in that office. We were out here then, actually. We were over in the conference room. And uh, 
we got the same GMs, Harold McCoy, Larry Cochran, Bill Crandall, the guys on the phone, who were all friends of ours. And they had these southern accents saying, what you guys end up doing this year? And Gary said, uh, 2 million, 12,000. <laughs> Silence on there. <laughs> okay, and we knew we had we had done something special. So it, uh, it it's been a really good ride for all of us and for all of you. And it's wonderful to see Richard Cedar Fair carrying this torch forward. As you said, we're all stewards in this industry, and we do what we do. And you might. Richard, the rest of the team, Kings Dominion, Carowinds, Cedar Point, Great America, done a ma an amazing job. And I always like to close a speech or, or when I'm doing a podcast or something, I said, you know, remember, we, we don't put smoke in the air and we don't pollute the waterways. What we really do at the end of the day is we put smiles on people's faces and we make memories that last a lifetime. And that's what we've done. Thank you very much, Dennis. You know, this uh, we talk about making memories and, and generations, you know, have, have come to this park. You know, real quick, my first visit here when I was, when I was 14 years old. And, you know, since, and my, my family's here today, my wife, my daughter, my two grandkids, Cameron and Kaylin. They, they would not be happy if I did not mention them today. So, <laughs> and my son in law. So, you know, generations you know, have made memories here. This year, so special. We have so many things planned this summer, uh, all kicking off the World Day weekend. Uh, but today is about celebrating a birthday. One of the things I, want, you know, I, I really need to mention, and I, I believe the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, you know, estimated over 150,000 employees that King's Island has hired over the, over the 50 years. Uh, a lot of those employees, you know, from the past are here today. I see Jane Cooper standing, Jane Cooper standing off to the side. Jane started here in 1972 as a merchandise associate, right, Jane? Jane went on in her career to become chief executive with Paramount Parks and a chief executive with Person Entertainment. Jane, thank you so much for coming today. About, I think in 2008, former general manager, my former boss, Greg Scheid. Hi, Greg. Greg was the general manager here for 10 years, longest, longest term general manager in the history of the park. I don't think I'm going to make it to 10, Greg. I'm going to try. I don't think I'm going to make it. Uh, but in 2008, Greg started uh, the Kings Island Hall of Fame. And that year, uh, there were a few people inducted into the Kings Island Hall of Fame. And to this date, there have been 12 former Kings Island associates inducted into that Hall of Fame. Dennis Spiegel is one of those, was one of the first members inducted. Janine Coyle, who was a rides associate here in uh, at Kings Island, you know, has gone on to a phenomenal career in radio here in Cincinnati. Colonel Electra is a former Kings Island uh, entertainer who also went on to a great career in TV and movies. Gary Watts, our founder, Kings Island Hall of Fame member. Rich Walberg, it was a Kings Island associate for eight years, uh, went into radio, and Rich passed away this, this past year. Rob Potter, where's Rob? I saw Rob earlier. There he is. Rob's in the back there. Rob was uh, in entertainment at Kings Island uh, years and years ago. A long time ago, Rob, right? A long time ago. Now is a award-winning uh, composer of, of music for TV and, mo and movies, including Disney. Rob, thank you for being here.
Lewis Johnson, who was a rights associate here for six years. The name may not be familiar, but it should be. Lewis was an all-American track star and went on to be a sports broadcaster for uh, the Olympics. Rob, uh, I'm sorry, Lewis is not here today. I don't know. Ruth Wallace was our uh, Kings Island Public Relations Manager. And she, uh, she was Public Relations Manager for Don, I can't remember, 20 years? Pardon? 14 years. She you know, was credited for naming one of the most famous rides, not only in Kings Island, but in the world, the Beast. Chuck Ingram, I think Chuck is here today. Chuck is in the back. Good to see you, Chuck. Worked in Kings Island Merchandise Entertainment Tech Services for about seven years, and now is in radio with WLW Radio. Ed McHale, our uh, Kings Island second general manager, uh, unfortunately Ed passed away this, this past year. Greg Scheid, our 10th general manager, is a member of the Hall of Fame. And finally, the last inductee was Hal Weber who was an executive, uh, actually came to Kings Island from Coney Island, along with Dave Bibb. Is Dave here today? Where is he? Where's Dave? Where are you, Dave? Wait a minute. There he is. Hi, Dave. Good to see you. Okay. Al and Dave came, came to Kings Island from Coney Island. Al became, uh, I believe, the first director of operations for Kings Island and spent his career in the industry. Uh, general manager here at Kings Island, executive with Cedar Fair, and an executive with uh, Six Flags later in his career. And Al passed away, unfortunately, suddenly, uh, a few years ago. However, so today, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, we're going to induct two more members into the Kings Island Hall of Fame today. The first, a gentleman you heard from uh, earlier who sang the national anthem, Mr. Alton Fitzgerald. <laughs> family is with us here in the front row. So, Mr. White, a native of Cincinnati, started his entertainment career with Kings Island in the summer of 1983 while attending University of Cincinnati's College Conservatory of Music. Alton starred in the lead role for popular shows Gotta Dance and Fascinating Rhythm for three summers, as well as touring with Kings Productions in Asia and the Far East. Mr. White's ultimate dream was to perform on Broadway. And he spent the next several years auditioning and performing whatever role was offered to him along the way. His dream was finally, be finally became reality when he was offered the lead role in Miss Saigon. Mr. White is the only African American actor who has played a lead role in six hit Broadway shows. King Mufasa in Disney's The Lion King, I believe 20 years, 12 years, <laughs> sorry that wasn't in the written, I had to have that, this most notable was playing King Mufasa in Disney's The Lion King for record breaking 4,308 performances. <laughs> In addition to creating celebrated roles in TV and film, he is also a headline concert performer, an author, motivational speaker, and continues to inspire, encourage young performers to follow their dreams. 
Mr. Alton. Mr. February of 2019, I was, my wife and I were at uh, Disney at Epcot, and we had just eaten dinner at uh, the German restaurant, I believe, and we stopped, you know, to listen to a um, Disney Broadway show at the American American Gardens Theater. A gentleman by the name of Alton Fitzgerald White was performing there, along with. Uh, Kissy Simmons. Incredible. Incredible. Had no idea at the time who he was. Never heard the name. That summer, uh, former Kings Island entertainers were forming a reunion. And I had the opportunity one day to uh, speak with Rob Podorf, and Rob was telling me who was going to be here. And he was going through a list of names, some I remembered, some I remembered. Uh, years years ago, and then he said, "An Alton Fitzgerald White." I'm like, "Wait a minute! You mean the Alton Fitzgerald White, the guy in the Disney Lion King? That guy?" He's like, "Yeah, he performs here." I'm like, "I was like you. I passed out. I passed out." And I had a chance to meet him, you know, at that reunion. And uh, I've read his book. If you haven't. If you don't know, he is an author. He, he published a book. It's called uh, uh, My Pride, Mastering Life's Performances. I got a copy of the book. I could not put it down. It was just amazing. So, Alton, thank you. Second, second nominee. This individual means so much to me, to this park. And to its employees who have who have come through the, come through Kings Island over the years, and this this individual still uh, is passionate about Kings Island. He uh, he calls me several times a year just to say, Mike, I'm just checking in with you, checking in with you to see how you're doing. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Don Miller to please come to the podium.
Don Miller. Mr. Miller started his career at Kings Island in 1972 as a ride operator for a Bavarian Beetle. In 1988, he became the director of safety. And in 1993, he was promoted to vice president of operations. Don was the vice president of operations when I started my career here in 1999. And he was a great mentor. He was a great coach and partner. And, and put his arm around me numerous times as I was as I was uh, trying to figure out Mr. Fisher, who was my boss. Sorry, Tim. Don made a lasting impact on the lives of thousands of associates over his career and is credited for fostering the outstanding culture that has made Kings Island special to this day. Don was instrumental in starting the first scholarship award program by retrieving coins from the films. That first year, the scholarship was a little over $400, right, Don? Today, our scholarship program has grown to over $70,000 and helps support 30 or more college associates annually. One of the scholarships was named the Don Miller Scholarship in his honor. Don always championed acknowledging and rewarding associates who he knew were vital to the park's success. Don retired in 2006 and still cares greatly about Kings Island. Congratulations, Don. I actually was not ready for this. I was not aware of this happening. Uh, Mike's right. I love Kings Island. And I think the thing I love so much about Kings Island is twofold. The steel, the iron, the entertainment, the food is certainly one factor that people love about the park. I'm fortunate to have the other factor, which is the people that run the park, the people that work at the park. I walked in in 1972, the day the park opened. I worked on a Bavaria Beetle, which was over here. Um, keeping in mind that that was before computers were invented, um, the ride operators ran the rides. They decided when to run it, when not to run it. And the people that opened this park that came from Coney, a small group, and then expanded into this incredible operation are very special to me. Uh, I still stay in touch with many of them from 1972. But the employees and the associates that work at this park are absolutely phenomenal. The memories, uh, the stories, um, are just amazing. Uh, it's just such an honor to be recognized uh, by Mike and the team. Uh, again, I wasn't prepared to make statements, but I, I want to thank Mike. I want to thank Richard and Tim, who are, are very good friends of mine as well, uh, for everything they've done for the park, for everything they've done for, for myself, and for the other people. Um, this place is amazing. When I think of what it looked like in 1972, I look at the steel in the, in the air, I never thought I'd see coast as 300 foot tall, as tall as the Eiffel Tower. I want to thank Kings Island, I want to thank Mike. It's been an honor to work at Kings Island, and I will love this place forever. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. All right. We're about to get this party started, right? You know, what would a 50th birthday party be without cake, right? So, to your right, uh, over between the French sure. Quarter and Sweet Spot, our, cul our culinary team is actually, I think, Not ready. now bringing out the cake. Is it? Here it comes. This cake, I have to give credit to our uh, culinary team, especially Belen, our pastry chef. I told, I told chef and the team that we needed a big cake. And chef, for those of you that, that have met Chef Major, when I say a big cake, he said, Mike, it'll be ginormous. <laughs> and I, I told him, I said, Chef, it needs to be about 5,000 people. And he said, no problem. 
So, what a masterpiece. He was reading to me the ingredients, um, you know, how many eggs and milk and flour and butter and everything else that took into uh, producing this cake. And it was a lot. So, but there's no calories in it. Just for those of you, there's no calories. So, as, as soon as we're done, the cake will be in position. You, you may see uh, Charlie Brown and Snoopy and, and Sally over, and Lucy, sorry. Over by the, the 50th banner, we've got a couple people over there. There's gold groups down along Sweet Spot. You can line up uh, down that way and enjoy a piece of cake. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to ask uh, my friend, Mr. Alton Fitzgerald White, to come up here and lead us in a rousing rendition of Happy Birthday. <laughs> you ready? Five, six, seven. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. so much for coming today. It was such an honor. I appreciate all of our, all our speakers. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, Mayor Richard, uh, Gary, Dennis, and all the general managers and others that are here today. Enjoy your day here at Kings Island and come back all summer long for our 50th anniversary celebration. Have a great day, everybody. KICentral.com, Kings Island's ultimate fan site.